Hi and welcome back to a new video. Typically we don't upload videos on a Tuesday but since AMD just launched the RX 6950 XT and we had the chance to test one of these thanks to Gigabyte for providing the sample. That's why we will also do a video today on this card. If you want to save all the hassle going through the review itself, I mean you probably know it by now, the 6950 XT is nothing really new or special. The difference between those two cards, both are gaming OC cards, is basically that the GPU is clocked higher and that we have faster memory. But the faster memory is not a faster memory technology, it's just higher clocked memory talking about 16 gigabit per second versus 18 gigabit per second, which means 2000 megahertz versus 2250 megahertz, results in about six to 7% more performance. That's it. But yeah, everything in detail will follow now. In today's video, we will compare both cards. We will take them apart. Both are gaming OC cards, so they are a lot different when it comes to the cooler. The PCB is probably pretty much identical. For comparison, I have a 6900 XT Gaming OC and I have a 6950 XT Gaming OC. Even though the name is pretty much the same, they are still a bit different when it comes to the cooler design especially and also PCB could be different, but we will find out about that later in the video. We will first start with some benchmarks. Pricing wise, I can only talk about Germany. I purchased the 6900 XT for 2012 euro last week. And according to AMD, the pricing of the 6950 XT should just be like 50 to 100 euro higher. Not sure if that's going to be the case. That's something I cannot judge, but let's just start with some benchmarks. I did a quick poll on the German YouTube channel last week to see what kind of resolution you want to see for the comparison and 55% of the users wanted to see WQHD versus UHD, so 1440p versus 4K and that's what we did. And also from my personal preference, I think cards like this, like the 6950 XT, are cards you would typically use with higher resolution and not full HD. About the test system, I was testing everything with a 12900K manually clocked to 5 gigahertz. I know that AMD recommends to test these cards with a 5800X 3D, but our current graphics card testing system is using a 12900K. I'm sure there are other testers out there which would test the card with the 5800X 3D and that's certainly good. So we have a bigger variety of tests because we will probably update our graphics card testing rig maybe end of the year with like AM5 or the new Intel platform. We will see. We will start our comparison with the only synthetic benchmark we are taking a look at today, which is the Times by Extreme GT1. In this case, the 6950 XT outperforms both 6900 XT and 3080 Ti by about 7%. If we now manually overclock the 6900 XT, the performance difference is about 3%. Starting with the gaming benchmarks and Assassin's Creed Valhalla in 4K. Here we can see a performance difference of 6% to the 6900 XT and 9% to the 3080 Ti. If we change to 1440p, we can see a performance difference of 8%. Even though a lot of people hate Battlefield 2042, this seems to be a case where the 6950 XT performs very well over the 6900 XT. In 4K we see a performance gain of 14% and if we change to 1440p the performance difference is still 12%. I also want to point out that we performed all benchmarks three times and took the average out of all the performance measured data. The expected performance gain is what we can see in Far Cry 6 with the 6950 XT about a 7% performance increase both in 4K as well as in 1440p. While PUBG does not perform very well with fast AMD CPUs, it seems to work extremely well with fast AMD GPUs. If we look at 4K in eSports setting, that's the same setting I'm personally using, we can see a performance gain of 18% over a 3080 Ti and about 10% over a 6900 XT. However, if we switch to 1440p, and this is going more towards the CPU limit because of the high FPS, the performance difference between all the three cards is pretty low, about 3-4%, to which is kind of neglectable. But there are also games out there that still perform better with Nvidia than with AMD. That's why we added Remnant from the Ashes. And if we take a look at this chart, you can see that the 3080 Ti beats both 6900 XT and 6950 XT, but only if you're playing in 4K. If you change to 1440p, you can see that basically all three cards perform exactly the same. 
It's still only a small selection of games and benchmarks, but I think it's safe to say that we can see about 6 to 7 percent performance gain overall. Of course, there are some games that have almost no benefit or some games that benefit better with NVIDIA, for example, and there are also games that have a huge benefit. But I guess average should be like 6 to 7 percent. We will also look at some overclocking benchmarks in a second, but first of all, I want to complain about some AMD politics again, because in my eyes, like the 6950 XT is pretty much upselling, not in a good way. We already complained about this when the 6900 XT launched. This is a gaming OC, typically clocks on the GPU like 2350 megahertz, some games maybe 2400 megahertz. You can manually overclock this specific one to about 2500 megahertz. There are some cards out there with better GPUs, for example. I had some samples that could clock to 2600 or like 2650 megahertz. So depending on that, you can outperform the, the 6950 XT clockwise on the GPU. But then we still know that the 6950 XT is featuring faster memory. As I said before, it's just a clock difference, like the 6900 XT, 2000 MHz, and this is 2250. If we would try to simulate a 6950 XT with our 6900 XT, we cannot do it, because AMD has this artificial clock limit also on the memory at 2150 MHz. And I'm pretty sure they did it exactly for this reason. Because otherwise, you could just take one card like this, and even if the cooler is worse, you can also get a different model with a better cooler, you can equip a water cooler for example, and then you could possibly reach the same kind of clock region. But AMD does not want you to do it, even though it's technically possible, but yeah, we have an artificial clock limit, which I think is just a very bad and annoying move. Totally disapproved from my side. And that's why we're looking at this Assassin's Creed benchmark, where you can see underneath the 6950XT, which is directly on top, an ASUS 6900 XT Strix, which I had previously benchmarked with manually overclocked to 2600 on a GPU and 2150 on the memory. You can see they perform almost the same. And if you now think about the memory difference, it's about 100 megahertz less on the memory. Then if there wouldn't be the clock limitation, they would 100% perform exactly the same or the Strix would even beat the 6950 XT. If we look at Battlefield 2042, it's the same scenario, again, with the manually overclocked Strix at 2600 megahertz. With the lower clock memory, it still beats the 6950 XT. And now think about having even faster memory or like no clock limit, it would be even faster. And in 3D Mark times by Extreme GT1, exactly same difference and same result as in Battlefield. With manually overclock, we can see the 6900 XT can beat the 6950 XT. At this point, I'm asking myself the question if the 6950 XT should even exist, just from a like technical point of view, because it's not such a huge difference to the 6900 XT that it kind of justifies making a new card. It's kind of a stupid Nvidia move, like that's something I would more expect from Nvidia, at least looking at the past, but now AMD seems to be doing the same thing. And I'm really curious what other reviewers will think about this, because I haven't talked to anyone yet and I'm very curious what they think. If I were to buy a new graphics card, for example, you want to get a 6900 XT or 6950 XT, I would always take this card, the 6950 XT. Obviously, you will have to look at the price and availability. That's something we simply don't know right at this point, because looking at MSRP is always, yeah, you know, it's going to be difficult. But the 6900 XT, at least the Gigabyte Gaming OC, if we take a look at this noise level chart, you can see it's more than twice as loud as the 6950 XT. So the 6950 XT, at least this Gigabyte model, has improved significantly. It has a lot better cooling quality. We have a vapor chamber cooler. We will disassemble this in a second, so you can also take a look at this. But it's a much better cooler. It's much more quiet, much more colder as well, and you have higher performance. So I think it's clear that you would always want to go for this mo model over this one, at least if the price difference is small enough. The difference is extremely obvious if you put both cards directly next to each other. Well, first of all, you will notice that the fans are bigger. Those are 80 millimeter fans and those are 92 millimeter fans. And because we still have three, it was obviously necessary to extend the length and width of the cooler. You can see it's maybe like four centimeters in length and about like, maybe two centimeters in width. But yeah, 
that is enough that you will have a lot more surface area on this card and that's also one reason why this card will always perform better, will always stay quite a lot colder than this model. Also looking at the back, the biggest difference is the cooler. The part that's extended to the right is again called screen cooling, similar to what you can find on the recent NVIDIA GPUs. Talking about NVIDIA GPUs, the difference to like a 3090 Ti is that these AMD cards are still sticking to three times eight pin, like the, the old power connectors. And again, if you look at this area right here, you can see that the cooler is quite a bit extended over the PCB. So some part of the fans can directly push air like on the side of the card for better cooling, while here on this more like traditional cooling solution, the fans will push all the air against the PCB. I'm not sure why this always happens to me, but whenever I try to disassemble those coolers, I always have these like parts of the connector, these black ones that are supposed to stay on the PCB, like it should stay on here, but it is always stuck to the connector and the whole thing comes off. This is really annoying. I'm not sure why this always happens to me, but yeah, that could definitely be improved. Both models are pretty much identical when it comes to the PCB layout. However, there are some components that differ slightly. For example, looking at this tiny inductor here and this tiny inductor here, they have different uh, markings on top. Also, you have like red marked capacitors on the 6950 XT and blue ones on the 6900 XT, different markings on these inductors, even though both are marked with R12 and R15 for memory and for the GPU. The memory ICs are different, obviously, because those are the 16 gigabit per second ICs. Those are those K4Z Samsung ICs and exactly the same model on here. And the only difference is that it ends with HC18. So higher clocked memory on this one, lower clocked memory on that one. So that was the obvious difference. But apart from that, both models just from the PCB layout are completely identical. But the biggest change, as we said before, is in cooling design. If we look at a 6900 XT, it's using a simple copper plate for spreading the heat from both memory and GPU, while we have a huge vapor chamber on the 6950 XT, again, for both memory and the GPU. Both are using otherwise heat pipes to spread the heat across all the fins. And the 6950 XT just features a lot more fins than the original card. If we now use the 6950 XT in the AMD driver, we will notice that there is no clock limit for the memory anymore. Well, there is some sort of clock limit. It's uh, 3000 megahertz, but realistically speaking, that's a clock you will never be able to reach with this type of memory. I also tested it, 2400 was benchmark stable, like 3 mark stable and 2350 megahertz. So 100 megahertz more was also game and daily stable, gaining additional like 3%. So that might be worth tuning your memory frequency a little bit higher again over what you already got with the 6950 XT. Talking about the GPU, I ran into the power limit quite early, so there was not much more headroom. Typical game frequency, something of 2600, maybe 2650 megahertz. There was not much more headroom than that. I also tried to find out what kind of GPU is sitting on the card, if it's an XTX or XTX H, but I'm not quite sure. I read out 6900 XT ref in hardware info, but I'm not sure if that's telling anything. On the other card, it was just listing 6900 XT. So yeah, not quite sure about that fact. All right, but I think it's still quite interesting. This card, especially from a price performance point of view, that's also the reason why I did not have a 3090 and 3090 Ti in my benchmarks. Because if you just look at the performance of this, and you already know that in most cases, it will beat a 3080 Ti. And from my perspective, the 3080 Ti is pretty much the last Nvidia card from their range you should get. A 3090 over a 3080 Ti makes no sense. And a 3090 Ti makes no sense at all. So that's why, yeah, I only had the 3080 Ti for comparison. And in most cases, this card should be the same price, maybe cheaper, and it beats the 3080 Ti. That's why I would probably get this card. All right, should be it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.